Benjamin Netanyahu joins us next. He is Prime Minister of Israel, a job that he held on October 7th when Hamas attacked, and a job that he holds now as Israel responds in Gaza. Prime Minister, welcome back to the program. Good to be with you. I want to begin by asking about Al-Shifa Hospital. The Israeli military has said they needed to seize that giant hospital complex in Gaza because a major command center for Hamas was underground. And I'll note that reporters on the ground have now been taken by the Israeli military to see some kind of staircase going down, but not what is inside. Have you, in fact, found an underground command center? Yes, we found uh, more than that. Uh, this is not a hospital you know. It was commandeered by Hamas. There were plenty of uh, terrorist chieftains, a lot of terrorists there. They fled as our forces uh, approached the hospitals, and happily we didn't have to have a firefight uh, with anyone. But we found there a lot of weapons, a lot. We found a lot of ammunition. We found bombs. We found on level minus two a command and control center of Hamas with military encoded uh, encryption. Uh, we found a terror tunnel in the compound, uh, and that uh, that's the staircase you're talking about. Can I just ask, Prime uh, Minister, I've, I've heard you say on another interview about this level minus two command center. Will you take reporters mm -hmm. to see that or send the military to take reporters yeah, to I see that? Yeah, I think we've already published uh, uh, photos of it. It's there. Believe me, it's a command center. Uh, and it's not an IC, uh, 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 what do you call it, an intensive care unit. I mean, that's what it is. It's a military compound. That is for, I mean, this is a commandeered hospital. It's not uh, Mount Sinai, and it's not uh, any one of the hospitals that you're familiar with or that I'm familiar with. It was taken over by Hamas, and now it's, we've taken over it. Uh, we've brought in, as we moved in, we brought Arabic-speaking doctors. Mm -hmm. We've brought incubators for babies. Uh, so this is, uh, I think, the uh, the most humane takeover of a hospital commandeered by terrorists in history. Well, what can... uh, and that's the whole point here, Steve. I, I think this is the main point. Israel is giving safe corridors and safe zones for civilians, and Hamas terrorists are using hospitals... Uh, in order to shield themselves behind patients. It's insane. Well, we'll continue uh, watching so for the be, evidence Israel coming out of that area, if, if we can. Hamas should be condemned. Our, our yeah, time is limited, ahead. Prime Minister. I want to yeah. ask about the future. Uh, but, but my passion is unlimited. Understood. My passion is unlimited for justice and for truth. Understand. And to place blame on Israel that is fighting these animals, these monsters who, who mutilated babies, who beheaded women, who raped uh, and murdered uh, women, who, who, who burned people alive. I mean, this is, this, this is just sheer folly. I mean, it's sheer evil. It has to be fought. And that's why I'm speaking to you with such passion. Understand. Such understand. Prime Minister, I want to ask about the future. Colin Powell, once Secretary of State of the United States, famously said to President George W. Bush of Iraq before the invasion there, you break it, you own it. What do you intend to do with Gaza once Israeli troops are fully in control on the ground there? We have two um, main goals there. One is to uh, prevent, uh, prevent things, uh, this threat from emerging. For that, we need to demilitarize Gaza. And the second thing we have to do is de-radicalize Gaza. It's like, what do you do when you, you beat the Nazi regime? Uh, well, you... Uh, Make sure that uh, Germany is not, doesn't arm itself again. And you also make sure that Nazism is uh, removed. Same thing you did in the victory against Japan. You know, you, you won the victory, but you then also made sure that there was a cultural change in Japan. We need a cultural change uh, in any civilian administration in Gaza. It can't be committed to... Uh, funding terrorism and has to be committed to fighting terrorism. When you say any civilian administration, it. Prime Minister, that mm -hmm. seems to be the question. You've said you don't want the Palestinian Authority running Gaza, which would be the other major Palestinian organization other than Hamas. You don't want them running Gaza. Who else is there? Well, first of all, anyone who doesn't share Hamas's goals and who doesn't share Hamas's inculcation uh, of uh, teaching children, Palestinian children, that Israel has to be destroyed uh, and that's their goal in life. I mean, that's what the uh, the Palestinian Authority is doing in the West Bank. It's teaching uh, children, Palestinian children, that Israel has to be annihilated. They pay for slay. They pay the uh, families of terrorists uh, uh, for the murder of Jews. And the more Jews they murder, the more they get paid. This is not the people who can uh, uh, work for peace. And, you know, almost 40 days have passed. 
and the Palestinian leadership of, uh, of the Palestinian Authority, President Abbas, has yet to condemn the savagery. I want to ask Prime savagery Minister, perpetrated you, on Jews since you, the Holocaust. You talked about so what, these are the people. Are, are we going to put these people in Gaza and tell them, oh, we entrust a future of peace with you? That's not going well. To let's happen. ask about that because you talk about what children are taught. Israeli forces in the last few weeks have killed children, parents and siblings and other loved ones by the thousands in Gaza, and you say it was to get at Hamas, that the civilian casualties were not intentional, but they're real and by the thousands. How do you expect to make peace with people who have had their loved ones killed? I think that any civilian death and any the death of any child is a tragedy, and we're doing everything we can to minimize that. But uh, Hamas is committing a double war crime. You know, it's both targeting our civilians, murdering them, mutilating them, but also hiding uh, behind civilians as human shields. And what would you do? Well, in fact, you can ask what you did. But what do you do because, now is my question. How do you make well, peace with them now? Well, let, 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 me, let me show you how you did peace with people in, in which you had to act in, in many ways the way we did and, and actually beyond what we did. Uh, the, the, uh, the Chancellor of Germany visited Israel. He called Hamas after he saw the atrocities, the new Nazis. What did, what did you do with the Nazis? Hitler invaded Europe, committed the horrible uh, crimes, the worst crimes in history. Uh, the Allies invaded Normandy, went through uh, the cities of France and Germany. The German army implanted itself, like Hamas, in the cities, in civilian neighborhoods, in hospitals, you name it. Uh, it didn't stop you from acting. You had to act. You tried to minimize civilian casualties, but many, unfortunately, many civilians were killed. Now, I think history would have taken a different course, a totally different course, if at the time public opinion was geared against the Allies instead of being geared against Understood, the Nazis. Understood, but the question, of course, is the United States ended up keeping troops in Germany for generations. That's where you're heading here with, with Gaza? Well, I'm not sure of keeping troops inside. Uh, and in fact, uh, it's not particularly necessary. Gaza is very small. So the overriding military responsibility has to be with Israel for the foreseeable future. Because once you eliminate Hamas, and we have to eliminate Hamas, we have to beat these barbarians, otherwise this evil will spread. And it is uh, a great danger to everyone. But once we defeat Hamas, we have to make sure that there's no new Hamas, no resurgence of terrorism. And right now, the only force that is able to, uh, to secure that is Israel. So for the foreseeable future, Israeli overall military responsibility. But there also has to be a civilian government there. But you, but you haven't said who that civilian government would be, sir. Well, I think I know who it can't be. It okay. can't be people who are committed wanna, to if I, uh, funding terrorism and, and inculcating terrorism. Let, let me say this. Very though, briefly, sir. That you had, you had this. We, we can give Gaza a different future. You say, how will the, this generation have a different future? Just the way the German people had a different future, the Japanese people had a different future, because you eliminated these toxic regimes, these tyrannies, these heartless monstrosities, and you replace them with something good. And what we need is something that is repla we replace that with something that cares for the future of peace between Israel and the Palestinians, that cares to rebuild Gaza that cares to eliminate this terrorist tyranny that uh, subjugated the people of Gaza. I think that's the only hope for peace and the only hope for Palestinians. Prime Minister, I've been talking, and we have been talking with Israelis for weeks, ever since the October 7th attack. Some of them support you and your course. I want you to hear two Israeli voters who do not. One of them is Margalit Zur. She is the grandmother of an Israeli soldier. Let's listen. I don't trust the government. I don't trust Bibi, first of all. For me, he thinks only of himself. For a year, he has worked for himself, for his own personal interests. And when I was in Israel, Prime Minister, I met Eliyahu Merimi, who is a Tel Aviv taxi driver, who says he had always voted for your party, Likud. Let's listen. But after what happened on the 7th of October, I don't know what to think about anyone from the government, from the army, from the intelligence, I don't know what to say. How, how things like this can happen, I don't trust anyone anymore. Nothing, really. What do you say, Prime Minister, to those Israelis whose faith in you was destroyed? Well, I can say that Israel is united today as never before. And my government is united. I called in a significant part of the opposition that heeded my call. We formed a unity government. My whole cabinet is united. And we're committed to doing three things, destroying Hamas, 
uh, <coughs> sorry, destroying Hamas, returning our hostages, and uh, assuring a different future in Gaza, different okay. from the one that we had before. Right. And well, I think on seconds. this, the country is united. Uh, of course, the different disparate voices, there are voices of disappointment. How could it not be after such a savagery? That's understandable. But right now, the main thing, Steve, is that the country is, is really... Uh, uh, really powerfully united, and you know I can find audios of many who support. Okay, and who and are we have heard people who said idea. that as well. Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, thank you very much for your time, sir. Really appreciate it.